Here is a question from Jan 2019. The figure X and Y shows a profile section of hole traced by two cross bedding sandstone. Which one of the following is a correct interpretation? So they are given the profile section of a fold with the current, uh, sorry, cross bedding of the sandstone. And we have to find out whether it is an anti formal anticline or anti formal syncline or syn formal anticline or a syn formal syncline. Can you answer this question or can you identify fold in this images? If you want to know how, then this video is for you. Hey guys, we are in our regular class lecture that is in structural geology and today's topic is the recognition of fold. And for this topic, I refer the book Structural Geology, Fundamentals and Modern Development by S.K. Ghosh, Structural Geology by M. T. Billings. Welcome to my channel, Success Guru and myself, Panthinathan, and let's get into the heading. That is the recognition of fold. Fold may be recognized in many ways, and the easiest and most satisfactory method is to observe the fold. But this can be done in comparatively few regions. As you know, there are so much of uh, vegetation and soil cover, and very few exposures are available. So the direct observation is uh, literally uh, limited to small some region, right? Therefore, a systematic study is required for identifying the fold. The future which helps in recognition of fold are as follows. So the first one is the direct observation, which is the easiest and most satisfactory method is to observe the fold in the field itself. When there is a soil cover is very less and when there is no any vegetation cover, and if the surface is very steep, you can observe the fold in the field itself. And the possible locations are like Himalayas in Alps and any other fold mountains. You can expect this type of direct observation. And also you can use the topography, road cuts or even the aerial photographs to recognize the fold. So you can see here there is a road cut which shows the crust of the fold. And you can also use the face images uh, like radar images to recognize the fold. And the second option is that inferred folds, that is folds are larger than an outcrop, can be recognized based on inference. When the outcrop, if the fold is much more bigger than the outcrop, then we can't expect the uh, uh, field, or the, we can't see the fold in the outcrop, right? So for such a thing, what we can go is we can go for the inference. Moreover, the part of the fold that may be above the present surface of the earth has been removed by erosion. Information that are commonly required to reduce the fold or Difference in attitude of some planar future at different location. Repetition of outcrop, especially we have already seen the repetition causes, and that can be used to recognize the fold. Presence of closure of uh, closure or nose. This is especially for the plunging fold. And the subsurface exploration by drilling, mining, and tunneling. Then subsurface studies by geophysical methods. Then finding the top and bottom of the bed, especially in the case of isoclinal fold. So we will see one after the other. The first one is the difference in attitude of some planar future at different location. Remember if there is a presence of full, you can see the change in the attitude of beds. So if you record or uh, make note of attitude of beds at different locations in the same area, we can recognize a fold. So here is the image of an antique line which can be recognized in the field with the help of the strike and dip as you know. In antique line, the dips, uh, beds are dipping in opposite direction. So you can see here in this portion, if you measure the strike and dip, then the dip is towards uh, east. And in this case, in this side, if you measure, then the dip is towards the west, right? So likewise, if you trace a single bed in different location, and if there is a presence of fold, we can use this thing for the recognition of fold. And also, we can use the map to find out the same thing, where the strike value repeats again and again, which shows the presence of a fold. Then the repetition of outcrop, as we already discussed in the repeat causes for repetition, there is a cause of repetition of the outcrop, one of the main causes is the folding and the repetition is like symmetrical type, that is if you move from the center in the left hand side, whatever it comes in the same order that will appear in the right hand side or this will be like a mirror image, that is called a symmetrical repetition and this would be due to the presence of a fold. The next one is the presence of closure or nose. In the plunging fold as a rule, it gives rise to a curved outcrop and the apex of which looks like a closure or a nose. So if there is a presence of a plunging fold, then there is a presence of a closure or a nose-like appearance, right? Then the subsurface exploration methods, the first one is the drilling, where exposure are very rare or absent, the structure may be deduced from the drilling. If some bed is sufficiently 
a distinctive in altitude in various jungles, then we can trace the same bed and we can identify or recognize a fold in the field. And in mining, what happens? The mining operation gives the most complete information concerning the underground geological structure, especially in terms of coal mining. What happens? We are going to trace a single bed continuously. And if there is a presence of fold, we can simply identify that fold with the help of this type of mining. And here is a report of uh, anthracite mine from Pennsylvania, that is in the year 1879, which shows the presence of a fold, right? And the next one is the geophysical method. That is, the geophysical method are largely used in deduction of subsurface geology, and it is an advanced method in which that reduces the cost as well as the time consumption. And few of examples are given below. The first one is a seismic data in which the artificial seismic data is generated somewhere and the time travel of this seismic data has been recorded in the geophone and the time lag has been used to present this seismic, uh, sorry, create this seismic data. And with this seismic data, we can interpret the subsurface geology. And if there is a presence of fold, we can use, uh, that can be shown in this data. If there is uh, no any fold, then that will not be here, right? And the second one is the gravity as well as magnetic data which will show you the uh, subsurface data on the surface itself and which is also a very cheap method comparative to the seismic method. So we can use this geophysical methods to recognize the fold in the field. Okay. So here is a section by seeing this you can imagine this is a regular section with uh, according to the stratigraphic rule the top one will be the younger one and the bottom one will be the oldest one and the center will be comparatively intermediate one in age right and there is no any fold. But if you see the complete section, you may regret the answer that is due to the isoclinal fold or recumbent fold. What happens? The beds may uh, appear as a homoclinal sequence, right? So in such a case, then we can go for a, uh, uh, we can find out the fold only with the help of some tools like finding out the top and bottom of the bed. Say if this is the top portion of the bed then and if it is present in the same top region then there is no any folding and if it is inverted then you can simply say that could be due to the isoclinal fold or recumbent one fold and there are a few tools to find out the top and bottom of the bed and you will see one after the other the first one is the cross bedding the lamina of rock or tangential to the bed at the bottom and sharp to the top so here this show this image shows the cross bedding you can see here the cross bedding has a tangential relationship with the older sequence and it is actually truncating at the younger sequence so by seeing this you can simply say this will be the younger formation and this will be the older formation and actually this is the question that was asked in the very first one right that is in the jan 2019 so with this you can simply say this will be the younger one and this will be the older one and this is an antique form so it looks like an anticline, but it but it is not anticline. It is an anti form, and the younger rock uh, and the center portion there is a younger rock. So this is called as an anti formal syncline, and this is like a syncline in form, but the center is having the older one. So this could be a syn formal anticline. So the option answer is option D, right? So we can simply find out with this help. And the second one is the bedrock bedding. In bedrock bedding, what you can see is the coarser segments will be deposited at the bottom and final portion will be deposited at the top. And if it is reversed, then it could be due to the reversing of the bed that is caused by the isoclinal fold, right? And the last one is the mud cracks, that is the crack that is uh, formed at the surface of the sediment that is due to overheating and uh, loss of water. So if there is a presence of mud cracks, the larger gap will be at the top and it will be tapering at the bottom. So if you see it is reversed, then it could be due to the isoclinal fold. Is that clear? So this is what I just want to explain in today's class. If you have any doubt, you can just mention it in the comment section. We will discuss later on. And I group my videos according to the category that you can check in my playlist. You can connect with us by mail, Facebook and Instagram and these are the links. You can support us by like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.